Hey everybody. So I posted this question on the Svelte Kids subreddit. Um, and essentially I was confused on what is going on with static site generation. And what I realized was it's not that I was confused what was going on with static site generation, is that the quirks of generating it made me think I didn't understand it. And so I listed this whole type out and um, I had some good responses. Um, this user commented kind of what was going on and this user um, kind of said, hey, well, you still need JavaScript and things like that. But at the end of the day, my question wasn't answered and I want to walk you through my solution over the last you know couple of days that I was figuring this out so that if you ever have uh, confusion with static site generation, whatever um, kind of framework, library, JavaScript library you're using, um, that hopefully will solve. The first thing I'm going to do is kind of explain what's going on with static site generation. So static site generation is essentially going back to a more basic form of development um, that's not dynamic, that you would be kind of creating something that you could just write in an HTML and JavaScript document. So imagine you have some HTML, imagine you have some JavaScript, right? Um, and essentially, you write it in VS Code, you write some JavaScript, you link it using a script tag, and you open it up, and Google Chrome is the guy that'll run your JavaScript, it'll render your HTML, and then you get a page on the outside. It works, you could serve this to a web server, and then, you know, if you imagine, this whole thing can just be a web server, and then you access those files from the web server, and then again, it just goes back to Google Chrome running your JavaScript. Now, what is static site generation? Essentially, we want this end goal. And if you remember, for a lot of JavaScript frameworks, you have a development environment where you write only JavaScript, or quote unquote only JavaScript. You know, in SvelteKit, you write some HTML, uh, in React, you write some JSX, but essentially that's what it is, right? You're writing some JavaScript. And the idea is, then you build it, and then that JavaScript dynamically creates HTML. So imagine, right, you run npm run build, and then it's going to serve JavaScript dynamically, and it's going to create, like, it, it's going to have this, like, this is the JS build, right? So let me just put this in here, JS build, because um, the other one was the uh, development mode. And so this is just a more optimized version of that, right, ready to serve. And then it's ready to serve dynamic HTML and JavaScript on the fly. And then this HTML and JavaScript is what gets served to your browser. Now, if you can see here, there's another intermediate step where I need to dynamically do stuff. So this needs to be some kind of server. And oftentimes, this will be Node.js. Okay, so this is some kind of Node.js runtime on a server or on a, on a cloud server or something like that that's running Node.js that has all of your code that's dynamically building these pages. Why would you want to dynamically build a page? Well, maybe you're hitting a database here. In a database, it's giving you a dynamically different HTML based off what user you have, right? Like, hello, Martin, for example, if I'm logged in. But again, you need this intermediate server to serve these files and give a dynamic experience based off of what's going on in the back end, okay? And then those files ship to you on the web server. Um, you know, if we want to be consistent, this is our web server, and it kind of shipped it out, and your Google Chrome will run it HTML and JavaScript. If you need to switch a page, it then goes back to the web server right here and fetches a new dynamic set of data um, based off of whatever was kind of here to begin with, okay, using the Node.js runtime. Node.js costs money because money, computational power, you need to rent out server space and computational power to do that. What are our other options? Well, let's just say you don't have a database and you already know that you just need the HTML and JavaScript. Well, you can go all the way back up to here and write your vanilla HTML and JavaScript. Maybe you can use some library like jQuery to make your life a little bit easier. But at the end of the day, you could just write this and ship it wherever you need to ship it. The thing is though, what if you really like the development environment of the JavaScript? Maybe you really like writing components in SvelteKit or React. Um, maybe it's, it's more efficient for you. And I'll give you an example. Right now I'm working on a portfolio. Um, let's see, is it here? Yeah, I'll show you in a second. I'm working on a portfolio where, um, do, 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 app routes. This is my first time using Svelte where I can make a really clean, um, set of, uh, components and things like that in Svelte. And I know what it would kind of take in vanilla JS. And I just, I want to make components. Like I think it's a really intuitive way to just 
organize, clean up my code and organize my thinking. Is it perfect? No, but that's what I want to do. And I don't want to dynamically serve HTML. It's just a portfolio with some, you know, like some, some of my projects on there. So what's the deal? Um, so instead, instead, I'm not going to build a dynamic thing to serve HTML. I'm going to do a static site render using static adapter, and I'm going to build all of the HTML and JavaScript files for my, um, for my project. So imagine you have all the HTML and JavaScript, and then that just becomes something like this. So if I drew an arrow, this guy would be here. And this guy would only come to being that HTML and JavaScript until this Node.js creates your guide there. And so there, I can open up these files and they would run exactly how I'd run here. Now, I want to give you one caveat, and this is part two of the video now. For SvelteKit specifically, I'll show you what I was expecting to happen and what didn't happen. Okay? Okay. So imagine you have a regular JavaScript project. This project is an HTML file and a JavaScript file. In that JavaScript file, you have a simple function. And in the HTML file, you might be referencing that JavaScript function and you've linked it using this. This is already written. It's a static site. And you can just, your browser can just open this and it'll work. So if I open this, it says, hello world. And so my hope was when I ran this whole static adapter and I got this to work, I could just open up each HTML file and it'll work. So let's see why that assumption got challenged and kind of how I worked around it to actually say, no, yes, this is exactly what I thought it was. All right, let's go to my Svelte site. This was a, just a generic HTML code. Here's my Svelte site. Let's go npm run dev. This is the portfolio that I'm working on on localhost. And this is what it looks like. Dynamic, it's got some animations, it's got uh, da, 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 da. Does it have? Did I run NPN run dev? Yep, NPN run dev. Um, let's see. The routing. The routing was working earlier. Okay, I promise. Um, I think the base. All right, there there might be an issue with uh, this routing. Let me let me change this right here. Which, um, this was all while I was trying to debug and understand this, but. Okay, yeah, there we go. The route, so the routing works. Everything, everything is 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 good and dandy, right? Now, the problem came when I said, okay, I'm gonna go into my Svelte config, and you can find the um, configuration of how this works on uh, Adapter Static. So if you go to Adapter Static, um, this is all I did, right, to to do my sir my uh, static site generation. So I put in um, uh, the adapter. This preprocessor is for Tailwind. I have the adapter in here. This is building it. Great. And then I went into my layout. Do, 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 do. Where is my layout? Layout.svelte. Page.svelte. Uh, layout.js. OK. And I added uh, this pre-render. And so everything was good. And then this is by default, meaning that it's pre-rendered. Uh, you don't actually need this line. Um, and so I said, OK, great. Let's test it. npn run build. Okay, so I'm going to build it and immediately it built and I can do npm run preview and it works beautifully. Okay, but if you think about npm run preview is still a JavaScript environment, there's something running this. So I was like, okay, no, I just want to go in and I want to find where my build is. So I'm going to open this in the containing folder and look, I have my build and I have an index.html file. Shouldn't I just be able to open this and run this normally? And I look and uh, it kind of works. Number one, a lot of my assets don't work. Number two, where's my animation? Number three, where if I click on this, it takes me to slash portfolio. And if I inspect element, I get a bunch of errors and I'm like, what happened? Not found stuff like that. And again, routing doesn't work. Now I added this trailing slash feature so that every folder is the route and has an index HTML in it. So if I went to this, it would open up my publications or whatever my file is, but the routing is broken. And so what I realized is if I want this to work, if you think about what is this link to, this links to um, this file. So what I need is to add this base into my build because when I click on home, it goes to my root directory of my entire computer. 
instead of going slash home slash martin slash documents, it doesn't know where it is. And in a web server, it'll think the root directory is where you kind of put it. On GitHub pages, that's where you put it. And so if I wanted to fix that for only the local version, I would come in here and I'd go into my Svelte config again. And for my base path, I would come in and say, all right, my path is slash home going all the way to uh, build with no trailing slash, okay? Now the thing is I have to add this to now every place where I have base in the start of all of my URLs as well because that's how um, it will build. It has to match up. Um, so it's probably better to just have a global variable that runs all these things. And um, everywhere you have base, I think it's only in two places. Um, now when you run npm run build, it's going to run the build. And if uh, and, and it's working well. I come into here and I open this guy up. Okay, bear with me. All the JavaScript is still broken, but look, my assets work now. And my linking kind of works. It's just that my home computer doesn't know to render. Like it, this, this would work on a typical thing. But again, my actual building of the, the site does not work. So, okay, what do we do with this now? How do we, how do we move forward? Well, we realized that, okay, all of my linking works now, but all of my JavaScript is blocked by course errors. I do not know the intricate reasons why SvelteKit apps have course errors built into their build, but this doesn't happen when you put all of this just on a web server that, that serves it statically. That's one. Two, this doesn't really happen, um, or this happens in order to prevent apps, JavaScript apps, from accessing your local files. So I think it's a security thing. So on a web server, it's okay because you've defined all those files to have access. On this one, essentially, my Chrome is blocking the cores thing to work. So basically, basically what I've proved is that all of these files more or less work. Now the JavaScript doesn't work because again, my computer is blocking access to files here, but on a web server, this would work beautifully. So if I upload this to github.io, to my GitHub, right, where, where everybody is, you know, starred my, my repositories and things like that, this should just work. Now, in order for it to work, I have to get rid of this base path because that's not applicable for GitHub anymore. So let's make that blank and let's make this blank um, and let's make this guy blank. But my npm run build that I just literally upload in here, no problems, no extra features. Like I didn't even do the deploy step. I just uploaded all the files because these are static files. This is just HTML that should work. This should just work. Let's go to mboldo.github.io and oh no, it doesn't work. And I'm like, all right, great. There you go. You need a JavaScript runtime. What is going on here? And then I realized you look into this github.io does not know, or GitHub does not know how to deploy Svelte apps without one little detail. And you have to come in here and hit add file, create new file. And you have to go no Jekyll. I think that's how you spell it. Let me, let me uh, check no Jekyll. Yeah, two L's, commit changes. What this tells your app is that this is not a Jekyll app or whatever. So please actually read some of the stuff that I put in here. I think it ignores this folder if it's a Jekyll, Jekyll GitHub pages and essentially doesn't serve any of the, um, the things. Now this might be cached. Um, so I'm going to pause real quick until that change propagates to GitHub. Okay. In about 20 seconds of pausing, I just refreshed the site and look at that. We have beautiful animations. We have pages here, right? And all of these are just static HTML pages that I could upload to a digital ocean server that I could upload to a GitHub pages and host it for free and it'll just run. You know what I mean? Um, so in summary, static site generation works exactly how I explained it. You build a bunch of HTML pages. The problem is sometimes it builds it with a non-resilient route and you have to specify the route for your specific web server and use case. Sometimes it builds it and then your Google Chrome on your local machine might block it with cores. Sometimes you build it and you go to GitHub and GitHub doesn't even, sh doesn't even serve the files because it thinks it's a Jekyll thing. Okay. So 
In theory, it works exactly like this. In practice, you have to do a few more extra steps to fully utilize that um, piece of uh, software, right? That that uh, that static site generation. All right. Thanks for watching. I know this was a pretty technical video, but hopefully it'll help at least I don't know five people because if I had I couldn't find a video like this to kind of really run through what's going on, um, and it would have been really helpful for me. All right, guys. Thanks for watching.